All right, when Barker comes on, he can do this. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to another edition of EduTalk. Now, EduTalk is a program that is put on by the Education Task Force in JDTA Network to highlight um, educational initiatives, educational talks, um, educational um, philosophies, um, the thinking mind right across the diaspora. So um, EduTalk is very engaging and it's geared towards um, teachers, geared towards principals, students, um, parents, um, everybody in education. So it's not limited to anyone. I am your host, I'm Dr. Duane Dice. I'm the chair for the Education Task Force, Jamaica Diaspora Education Task Force in JD10. And I'm very, very um, happy to be joined um, this evening with a few stalwarts um, in education um, right across the, um, the diaspora. We have with us um, from Jamaica, uh, Mr. Damian uh, Henry, and he's a, a principal, and uh, he's a principal for um, Mitchell's Hill, Mitchell's Hill uh, Primary, and yeah. I'm just going to talk a little bit about himself in a little while, and also Mrs. Um, Camilla Walsh Reynolds, and she's the principal for um, Bios. That's how you pronounce it, um, Mrs. Uh, Reynolds. It's a boys content primary and infant school. Okay, boys content and that boys content primary and infant school is in Clarendon. So Saint we, Catherine, we are we are on the board of Saint oh, Catherine. Yeah. Oh, I stand corrected there. It's right there. Okay, all right, good. And um, Mitchell Hill is in um is in Clarendon. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. All right, cool. So now um so we're gonna get into some. Um, discussions here with the principals. We have also with us uh, Mr. Javon Miller, and he is from Polyclouds. He is the, the inventor, so to speak, of Polyclouds, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. And also my old um, friend here, um, Dr. Miguel Barker, and he's just calling in from um, Oman, in the Middle East. Welcome, Dr. Barker. We're going to get you to talk a little bit about yourself too um, as it, we open up the, um, the program. So um, let's get started. Today's focus um, on the program is um, education in a virtual setting, uh, moving out of COVID, um, leading educational change into this whole activity of, um, of guiding students and teachers and, um, and, and by extension, our parents in education. What are some of the things we put in place to, to cater for students learning? How we communicated with, with parents moving through the summer um, and now that we have started school in Jamaica, uh, what are some of the things that we have seen happening over the past um, two to three days in our educational experience. So those are some of the things we're gonna talk about and then talk about initiatives that can be implemented um, in the virtual um, platform as it relates to education and educational growth and educational change. Some of the things that we really need to tap into as we move forward in a new era as it is, okay? So let me get our panel panelists um, to introduce themselves and then we get started. Let's start off with um, Mr. Damon Henry. Tell us who you really are in a short sense, um, Mr. Henry. My name is Damien Henry, not Damien. Oh, Dame, oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> my name is Damien Henry. Um, I'm the principal for Mitchellsville Primary, a deep, deep rural school in the parish of Clarendon. We, we, we are located in the hills. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are a small school. We are a small school, but we excel in almost everything that we take part in. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Where, did you grow up in that, in that area? No, I was I joined a few districts apart. Okay. Um, I, I'm new to the role of principal also. 
Okay. Um, I started working as a teacher at the Rock River Primary School. Mm -hmm. I, I acted there for four months. Oh, the okay. School at which I'm at now, uh, Mitchellsville Primary, during my four months at Rock River, they lost their principal due to sickness. Oh, okay. Right, and oh. and, and 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 I was encouraged by my by my education officer along with my board chairman mm -hmm. to move forward. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. That's very good. So I'm very glad I'm, I'm talking to you as a, you're not really new in leadership, but you know, new with the right, title right. principal. Yes. So that's, that's very good. Very, very yes. good. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, let's go over to uh, Miss uh, Camilla. We're not seeing you so clearly, but we're going to get you to talk and then fix your, um, your camera. The camera is kind of blurry, but um, introduce yourself and then we're going to get it fixed uh, so that you can be very clear. Go ahead, please. Okay, my name is Camilla Walsh Reynolds, principal at the Boys Content Primary and Infant School. Since so September 1, 2017, I've been an educator for over 20 years. I have been, I've taught all across the different schools, Spanish Stone Primary, St. Catherine Primary, Horizon Park Primary, and I'm now in the position of leadership. Okay, good. So you have um, quite a few school experience right there under your yes, belt. Sir. Yes, thank you so much. Um, all right, so go over. I'm going to leave Dr. Barker for last year, by no means least. Um, Mr. Miller, introduce yourself. Uh, thank you. Pleasure. I'm Johan Miller. I am the founder of Polycloud Interactive, which is a gaming studio that uses new and emerging technologies to create unique learning solutions. Um, we're new and we are hoping to make a positive change throughout this um, time, this very interesting time throughout the pandemic and I'm very happy to be here with you wonderful um, people. All right, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, very good. Um, okay, so we're going to talk to you in a little while as well. Um, my brother and the um, comrade, so to speak, um, Dr. Barker, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Many people around the diaspora know you very well because you have been on the program quite a few times. I'm talking about education. Education is your passion. Um, so tell, tell everyone a little bit more about yourself so that they know who you are again. All right, good morning, everyone from, um, <laughs> good, very good morning. I, I literally um, come in from the East. So I'm, I think in Jamaica times, I think I'm nine hours ahead of what's happening in Jamaica. So I'm in Muscat, Oman. I am mm -hmm. a born Jamaican. I'm from St. Mary and not to be St. Mary. And I, um, if anyone is from St. Mary, they'll know many of the schools that I'll perhaps mention. So I attended St. Mary High School. Mm -hmm. And then I did my teacher's college training at Pasley Gardens Teacher's College. It is now called KISS. Oh, okay. A number of years teaching in St. Mary. And then I went on to, um, to the University of the West Indies, taught at a number of schools in Kingston. And then I did a time in the UK, did 10 years in the UK. And now I'm teaching in the Middle East at the moment. I am a an assistant principal in an international school. And what I tend to do, I'm, I'm involved in a number of projects internationally, working with some of the organizations that have been leading learning and transforming the lives of children across the world. What I bring from time to time is just an insight. I'm fully aware that my context is different, but one of the strengths that I think I have is the ability to look for solutions in Jamaica that are contextual. And so hopefully in this discussion, I, I can um, add some value. As usual, it's a pleasure to be on EduTalk with um, Dr. Dice and yes, exchanging yes. ideas and, yes. and, and um, learning as well. Thanks. Yeah. Very good, yeah. We're gonna share some deep stuff, yes. All right, let's start off. Um, Ms. Mrs. Reynolds is taking care of the microphone. So we're gonna come, come to her second. We're gonna start off with uh, Mr. Henry. Um, what, what, what are some of the things you look at coming in as a new principal in the school, um, things that you look at, strategies that you put in place, maybe physical structure, um, certain um, strategies you put in place, 
leading up to the school year? Um, the COVID put a spin on everything. COVID put a spin on everything. The plan was to, because we were really planning and preparing for face to face. The reason for that, as it relates to me, as I said, we are in a remote area. Yes. Access to internet is a no no. Yeah, okay. The access is a farming community. Because of that, majority of the students, slash, majority of the parents, slash, students won't have a device to work with. And I'm not talking about computer, tablets, I'm talking about phones. The majority of them have what we call out here a banger. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, what is a banger? A phone that does not use, you can't use, it does not make sense to use service on it because wow. you won't be able to access the internet. Okay. One of those, did, um, touch, you don't have touch on it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I, I changed, I changed, I was, because I was preparing for face to face, I had some work done to the, to the physical plant. I, I, I changed a few doors because the doors that were on the school has been there from the establishment of the school. And that's like 60, I'd say, 60 odd years now. I've changed, changed a few doors. Um, since I've been there, I've ensured that we got a new bathroom from Food for the Poor and it's up and running because we constantly using pick latching. Um, yes. We're done. We're gone now to flush toilet. Oh, um, very good. Very good. Yes. I tried, I ensured that all the requirements of the ministry both the Ministry of Education and of Health. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was in the process of putting majority of them in place for September slash October. Mm -hmm. But because of that, I have majority of the equipment in, in school mm -hmm. that's still holding on a bit before I start. Because as I said, the community is small. And because mm -hmm. the community is small, everybody from within the community uses the school compound. Oh. Right, we are not we are not fenced, so because of that, the, the the entrance towards the schoolyard itself is fenced. But you can easily well walk on the small playing field and just go up in the school anywhere in the school. Oh wow! So are you? We don't have securities nor anything like that. I understand. It's a it's a community school. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, oh, it man. is. So what 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 have you seen so far? With since there's no internet access. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you reach students starting uh, the new school year? What I asked my teachers to do, as I said, we are small, we are a multi-grade school. Mm -hmm. So there's only four of us there. Myself make four, three teachers plus myself, four. I teach grade one and two, three and four, five and six. What mm -hmm. I asked my teachers to do is to call the numbers because, you know, when we're doing registration, all we have to take a contact number for all the parents to call all the numbers that we have and ask the parents directly if they will be able to be on any, well, we only one platform we can think of and it's the WhatsApp. Okay. And you know, WhatsApp is just video links, um, voice messages and text messaging. Right. Because of that, however, because of that, however, we have to also hold back on the video links because if we do send a video link it's going to take forever to load yes yes so we mm -hmm. have a class for an hour you send the video early the, the possibility do exist that the hour elapse and the video on the load all now my goodness the situation wow yes so um the the it, it's just the um just videos you're reaching out with the videos or no no, no. Um, the ministry this is where the ministry comes in and, and well we haven't yet received anything but we were we we were promised that um yeah. they will help us with learning kits okay um, what i did I, I spoke to the parents and i let them know that we will be doing drop-offs okay um, yeah. two days out of the week yeah so we off and we pick up mm -hmm. Even we, we're supposed to be doing diagnostic testing now, and the majority of the schools have started, but we have not yet because we have not yet received the art copies. Yes. The school. Oh, what, what, what's the total you have in your school? I have, population? 48, I have 48 students. 48 students. Wow. Right. 
So that, that's not too difficult to get to deal with um, from, uh, the, you know, to, to, to secure stuff for them, you know, in the community. So something needs to get done with that part to pull, move them forward. We, we, we get, I spoke to I spoke to the member of parliament right. um, and I asked him if it's possible for him to assist us where internet is concerned. Yeah. He, 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 he told me that he will try. Yeah, yeah. He will try. Yeah. But for right. no, for no, for no, we are way at the bottom of the ladder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. What you can do still is to move to a, a, a strategy of, um, you know, copying papers and give it to them, drop them off. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all I think because, how often do you drop off? No, we're, we're planning, we're, um, because this, is, this week is the first week, we're yeah. prioritizing the parents along with the teachers and let okay. them know the procedure that will take. Um, all of that will begin on Monday. So we're going to do drop off on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay. And then yes. you pick up during those time to, to right. return. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Um, okay, cool. Um, Mrs. Reynolds, is, is this the case in your um, experience over there? Okay, sir. Um, we are located in the rural, in the early terrains of St. Catherine, but that's not our case. Um, oh, what we're doing as we speak, is that we are using all three approaches. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we have done, we had started engaging our students as of September 14th. Okay. So we started, right, so we wanted to, to get them engaged, get them back in the mind frame of school teaching and learning. So mm -hmm. we are currently using three platforms for the school. So that mm -hmm. is the Google Classrooms. So mm -hmm. all, all classrooms, all teachers have set up for the Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. This platform enables those students who may not have the internet at, um, access at this time. They mm -hmm. can always go to the Google Classroom whenever they have connection and they can access the activities that was, that, that was done. We are also using the Zoom platform mm -hmm. where that platform is used for teaching and learning as well as the Google Classroom. I was um, this morning engaged in a grade five lesson with the teacher and the students. And we use the WhatsApp grouping for all classes where the students is like a re refresher for the mm -hmm. students where the teachers now use this platform because we realize it is one that is mostly accessible. So you find that this is where all the group activities are placed, all the workbooks are placed. Also, the ministry had informed us that we should give out the workbooks that were sent to the school yes. for term one. So those were distributed on Monday. So the parents came in and collected those textbooks. So those children who may not have access and not being able to be a part of the teaching and learning during the days, what we have, they have the books and the, the workbooks are given out to each child and then they are able to use them to carry out the activities on a daily basis. So okay. we have a structure oh. in place, right? Mm -hmm. So our lesson plan, our, our, our school schedule for this week and for continuing for the online learning platform is that of 8.30 to 1.30 p.m. Okay. that the students are engaged on a daily basis, yes. Oh, so that's very established structure you have there. Um, yes, how, how many, what's your population over there? We have currently 154 students on roll. Okay. And you, um, how many you have access to so far? Like um, the percentage wise. Um, based on what we are seeing on a daily basis, it, it fluctuates because they know that the internet access you have, a, but we, we currently have about 70% of the cohort being okay. engaged on a daily basis. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, that's not yeah yeah that's not bad that's not bad at all i yeah. wish i could say the same <laughs> yes oh god we're, we're gonna try to see if, what we can do to fix it you cannot continue like this um okay so um there there are there are strategies that we can use in in online learning and i want dr barker is going to put on a seminar next sunday um listening dr barker as an administrator um, what what do you hear, and what what can be done to fill these these gaps, so to speak, from your area? Well, um, thank you, and I, I lift my hat 
to um, the principals and what they are doing clearly in a very, very difficult um, situation. I really want to um, commend um, both Damian and um, Camilla for the work that they are doing, you know, despite the lack of resources and some of the insurmountable challenges that they certainly are facing at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm also very cautious in providing solutions, so to speak, because the context in which I currently work is certainly not um, similar. But what I, what I can, can say is that that kind of resourcefulness is going to be what, what is needed. You know, I, I, I'm shuddering to think about how do you organize online learning without having online access. You know, and I, I'm trying to figure out as well, um, with teachers not um, trained per se in delivery of online learning and organizing instruction around online learning, I, I wonder how, how that, is, that is working. Um, what I've seen as well, um, Dr. Dice, is mm -hmm. also a need for parents to be fully involved in this process and understanding what their expectations are in this part of the process. Because uh, school has always been a place where parents drop their kids off or at least send them to, and then they get on with work and pick them back up in the, in the evening. Now school is going to require a lot more parental involvement. And we also know that many of the parents may want to be involved, but they just cannot be. So now yeah. there's a lot left on the child to also figure this out. So I think there's a lot of work that will, I, I, I feel that you will be thinking about this um, our young principals here, we're thinking a lot about how to involve students in the process to understand how different this is and what the expectations are. Parents, how different this is and what the expectations are. And certainly, the, I, 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 I am confident that there will be conversations with teachers about the newness, the difference, the, the different kind of approaches that will be needed to impart learning from a distance because it's different. There's a different pedagogy around it. And um, even the idea, I, I was doing some reading today because of the seminar I'm going to do and because I'm doing a presentation tomorrow night at a university in Canada about the pandemic. And I am beginning to infuse what's happening in Jamaica. So I, I, here's the thing, I don't want people to under, under, underestimate this idea of using WhatsApp as a feature to deliver learning internationally. Yeah, yeah. But the fact is, don't underestimate it. It is an area of mm -hmm. real um, technological um, innovation. Mm -hmm. and, and teachers in Jamaica need to start seeing that they're actually forging a new um, pathway in how we deal with the pandemic for countries that don't have the resources that others have. And I'm reading a number of research about the effectiveness of WhatsApp. And so it is a legitimate way of addressing a problem that cannot be um, just treated as it's a problem. And so we need, I, I want people to see it as, okay, what are the strategies that we can use given that we have to use WhatsApp? Because it is a legitimate way of, of, of running learning. And I hope to share some of the research that I have been reading about WhatsApp as a legitimate tool for instruction mm -hmm. in distance learning scenarios, you know? So I really wanna commend you guys for leading the way on that. And I'm actually listening as a part of my own research to hear some of the strategies that are being used because I really want you to see this as a, not as a negative, but really as a positive because the pandemic opened a lot of um, opportunities. And um, I think we need to be aware that this is something that we can contribute to the, to the world as well. So I'm yeah. here to document that. Okay, yes, very, very good. Um, we, um, you mentioned something that is very important, which is WhatsApp. Um, when, when we talk about WhatsApp, we talk about videos and the call just to personalize it. But you're right, um, taking it further into education and call it a tool for education is very good. I want, um, I want Javon, you, you talk a little bit um, to introduce your program, what you have there for education. Just, just tell us a little bit about how you come about your program and, um, and, and what it is. What is it really for, for, for schools? Okay, gladly. 
Um, good afternoon. I, I need to first commend everyone here um, on the excellent work that you all have been doing, especially as educators during this time. You know, um, well, we at Polycloud formed uh, uh, an application called Stemly. And what this application aims to accomplish is to create a bond between the parent, the parents, teachers, and children, meaning each of the three bear an equal responsibility as to the child's learning, right? And in the past, we have put a lot of focus as to what Dr. Barker brilliantly said, a lot of focus on teachers and, you know, assume that teaching is, that is it, um, you know, I send you to school and that's all there is. But mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that is not the case. Parents need to take some responsibility. So as a result, um, this application tries to bridge that gap by creating games that children would enjoy and then report cards that parents and teachers can look on and then evaluate whether their children are doing well or not. So that is essentially STEM league in itself. Um, Self-sustaining does not need the internet. Um, so you, you only need the internet to download it and view the leaderboard, but minus that, it's all, it's all on them. And um, what we hope is to create a system where, again, teachers can rely on parents so that teacher can say, um, Mrs. Brown, um, Michael isn't doing well at addition. You know, it would be really good if you could just let him do three or four missions in addition. Michael can do it. The parent can look and say, okay, you're doing a good job. And then that report can be sent to the teacher so that everyone is, is up to date as to that child's progress. So that's yeah. essentially what it, it is. is what it is. Okay. Yeah. We're going to ask you a little bit if you can share. I don't know if you're going to share your screen in a little while to, yeah. to show us what exactly it is. Cool. Okay. But, and when we come back to you, good. So, um, uh, Sir Henry, and I'm opening up the floor zone for, for discussion. But, um, what are, what, do you think you can sustain this for oh, for the long haul with um, the drop off and the picking up and so on if you don't get to the point of um, internet access? For how long? I don't know. For how long? I don't know. But for now, with the help of the ministry, with the help of the ministry, I, 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 I should be able to because the ministry will be supporting us as it relates to printing of the of the of the of the documents of the kits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all, all i will be responsible to do is to put them together and take them to the respective point to drop off so okay. with the ministry's help i should be able to to cope okay okay yeah, we, we we'll see what happens in the short term um, with that, because you really need internet access. Um, yeah, not not seeing students online um, or in person, it's defeating the purpose. It's really defeating okay. the purpose. Yeah, um, Miss Mrs. Reynolds, how um, how do you communicate with uh, with parents? Okay, what happened is before before we were projecting based on the the increase in the numbers here in Jamaica mm -hmm. that school would, would not have been open face to face. So what we have done, we had called grade meetings to prevent the crowding on the compound. So mm -hmm. after we had our grade meetings with the parents, we actually told them the plans that we have because as a small school, we were planning for face to face and an all day setting, but because mm -hmm. of the right the onslaught of the, the increase in numbers. So we had met with our parents start getting for them to get engaged, knowing that, listen, this may happen. So before you purchase a textbook, ensure that you get a tablet for the child. So mm -hmm. we, had, we had already had that meeting with our parents. So we started a little test run on the 14th of September to mm -hmm. see how many of our students were engaged. And now we did a full rollout come October 5. But what, one thing I want to add though, the ministry has done their training Mm -hmm. And they are also, they have a platform, Mr. Henry, where the LMS platform, once you get yeah. on that platform, it doesn't yeah. need any data or internet access. So no. that platform can be used for the teaching and learning. So we are currently in the process. On Thursday, we're going to be having our common planning time with our teachers. We're going to be meeting to discuss how we're going to engage the students using this platform mm -hmm. where each child was given an email address 
and yes. there's going to be there will be a training tomorrow led from um the ministry of education so the parents themselves will also be trained teachers mm -hmm. were trained and administrators were trained using this platform good good um do you see as young principals in in the system the, both of you um do you see um the the, the need the, a greater focus is it, it does it need a greater focus on on teacher training as it relates to these platform or technology in general or were we equipped as to some degree yes there there so, is the need for teacher training especially for some of my senior teachers they yes. fly away from the ICT. Yeah. Um, okay. Even though the new curriculum have given that platform where teachers need to, you know, integrate the ICT in the lesson planning. So what I did as a young principal going in, I ensure that my teachers make use, full use of the ICT in teaching and learning. So mm -hmm. this kind of, you know, we were already there. It's just a disadvantage with the students not being able to access because if you have a class of 20 two students and you only have 16 engaged on any particular day, then of course, you know, we don't want any child left behind. Right. And what is happening at this point that some students are being left behind because of the lack of internet access. Right, right. No, that I'm gonna come back to the gap because they're left behind in a little while. I want um uh Dr. Barker. Um Dr. Barker didn't mention, you know, he's trying to hide it. But there is a he has a seminar coming up on on Sunday, and um, for the diaspora, and I want him to share a little bit about it. It's um, assessment, Dr. Barker, in in um, in distance learning environments. Sorry, let me unmute myself. You're you're unmuted. Oh, I'm unmuted. Sorry. <laughs> Remember to press the button. Yes, yeah, so uh, it's interesting because when I agreed to do the seminar on um, assessing learn, assess, so it's called assessing students in online learning. I, I was coming from the perspective of the world that I am, um, my world, my life world, which is one where the majority of students have access to internet and the majority of students have the right kind of device to access the internet and experience learning as full as possible. So when I was thinking about it, it was coming from that perspective. Having had a number of conversations with teachers in Jamaica, I realized that the reality on the ground, and even this session right now, is certainly demanding of a more contextual response. So my, my seminar will be very much looking at the situation where the majority of students are accessing the the internet and accessing learning using a mobile phone, which is in itself a research um, of research interest because mm -hmm. this is not normal in the world. The majority of students may not be able to access learning in a synchronous um, manner and teaching may not have to may not be possible to deliver synchronously. So there is that that question that many places in the world ask, should it be synchronous and as or asynchronous? doesn't really happen. It's, a, it's maybe something that will be considered from the perspective that you do it and then they get it when they have access to the internet. And you also have to consider what modality they'll access this. So at the moment, my conversation will be really about being creative and what's happening in the world in terms of how this is being applied <laughs> long before COVID and post-COVID or intra-COVID, if you want to call it that, because that's really... Um, where I want to put it. I really want teachers to start thinking deeply about, um, I want to bring the question of how can we further, um, first of all, legitimize the fact that WhatsApp is a legitimate way. I want to raise this from something to say, boy, we only have to use WhatsApp or the only have mobile phone and just say, listen, here's an opportunity to show the world that we can. We can. And it's not to say to the ministry, don't give us the resources that we need, but it's at the end of the day, as um, Camilla mentioned, we don't want to leave any child behind, but it's also an opportunity for learning, you know, because we all went to teach us college and did instructional technology. Mm -hmm. And when, when I did instructional technology, it was with um, the, card, the, the cartridge paper. And, <laughs> um, yes. recycled, using recycled yeah. materials to, to impact learning. We know that learning in, is a lot more than technology. So, and to be honest, as I said in another forum, a pen is technology. Mm -hmm. 
So we, we just have to have that open mind. And my conversation with, with people will be about, in the end, we're trying to assess learners and being creative is trying to figure out how can we find out what they have learned. And that should inform the teaching process. So hopefully in that seminar, I can, you know, raise the kind of questions that leaders can go back to their teams and say, you know, what, how can we answer this in a meaningful way? But yes. certainly the ministry needs to, 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 to look at real, um, and, and it's not easy for the ministry to equip everyone with everything that they need. This is really going to be based on the prosperity of the country and not necessarily, you know, because there are still other pressing things that are out there. So yeah, yeah, yeah very much so. and enjoyable. Yes, yes, it's true. So we're looking forward to it, but I want to thank you very much for highlighting those areas um, that the fact that um, we're in, in the gutter, so to speak, right now, trying to work our way out. There is a way um, we can use the resources that we have until better come, basically. Until better um, come. Yeah, until better come. Um, Javon, you ready? Um, I want you to take us through, because the, the reason this is, uh, we're highlighting um, uh, PolyCloud is because, and the initiative behind it is because of the the, um, the access, the uh, offline access to it, that you don't have to have internet all the time to, um, to use it. But tell us about the, um, the grade levels or age um, that you have um, uh, resources or content on there for. Gladly. Um, so currently we have for grades two and three. Um, we decided to take that approach because some children I mean, when we were doing tests on it for the grade four level, we realized that some children who are in grade four were not necessarily at the grade four level. So it is not only a teaching, it's not only a practice tool, it's also a teaching tool. So we designed it to be at the beginning. So even if it is that you're at grade four and you don't really understand the concepts, you can always go back and move forward. So um, it's for those levels. Um, and it, it, it has some psychology behind it to really bring the confidence up of children because one of the things that we found is children in Jamaica are brilliant. It's just that they don't have the confidence really to, and I mean, we all know this. If a child had a confidence, he would be a star, right? So um, that's, that's, that's really the, the grade. So it's grades two and three, and um, we're starting it from there. You're going to increase it as you go along. Once you get more right, confident right. to push it in. So this is it's, right. a, it's a sort of um, video game with um, math content and the math standards that are linked to it. Um, okay, Javon. Right, allow me to share my screen. I, I want everyone to take a look at it um, in, in, in its true colors. Okay. So right now, this is just a video sample of, of what it is, but... Um, so we have, if everyone can see, this yes, is the yes. home page, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're supposed to be seeing yourself. This is the home page, and you know our partners are the Jamaica Diaspora Ta Education Task Force. Um, on each on the application, there is a leaderboard, uh, which you need the internet for, but you don't have to have access to it, and it refreshes every three day, um, every week, right? Mm -hmm. um, at the end of every week, their names are said on a radio show. Uh, so you have two categories, you have challenges and you have reports. Report Plus is where you can have access to the child, uh, what they have done, how, how they've done it. Uh, but I'm gonna play the video and explain mm -hmm. each way. So these are the topics. Um, you have groups, number values, additions, clocks, multiplications, um, and fractions, among others. And I'm gonna play a sample of it. Okay. Right now it's void of sound, but it's if it is for simplicity's sake, let's say it is a very interactive textbook that gives you live feedback as to what is going on using an algorithm that creates random numbers. Right. So it is not every time they play, they will get something different. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is the radio show I had mentioned. And we're gonna go into something else. This is clocks. We did clocks because we realized that a lot of children having do have a problem with understanding the clock. So yes. we have a really basic setup here where they can um, manipulate a clock and they can they should actually match the time. Sorry, we'll talk a little bit soon. They can actually match the time 
on on the clock, right? So eventually, this is a time that is shown on the analog clock, but this will disappear and say it's your turn, and then the child would have to figure it out on their own. If they don't, they can always go back and restart it, and then it's really for you to interact and learn and play um, in a safe and fun environment. So um, that's 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 the, the preview but what, for now. What is the, but, um, what there's is, more. What is the battery for at the top with the percentage on it? Oh, gladly. Um, so the battery is it it runs down. Um, it's you can't have a challenge without a challenge. So as time goes on, the battery decreases. So it is now a race against time for you to, um, let me see if I can start it up. Complete, yes. Right, complete the task within a specific time. Right, and then that is how also you get your points. Because again, as I said, it's a magic triangle. So this is the fun part for the kids. Um, the point system is where you get to say, what is their understanding? If they have a high enough points in there, um, this section here would have a star system to show their progress and how quickly they've done a certain task. Um, if they've completed 20 tasks for the week, and you can set the task, if they've completed 20 tasks for the week, the star system would be full. So the parent or the teacher can simply see and say, oh, okay, you've done enough work for the week to prove that you understand this concept enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that, right? Okay. And um, yeah, and these so are is, the topics that it, we have so it far. Unlimited, is the, the questions. How many questions do you have in there to finish the task? Oh, um, so we we actually said that right now it's 10 questions set before our task is complete and it is registered as okay, your task is complete and finished and over. Um, each question is, again, it creates a random algorithm. So um, this is 215, next time it will create 320. It's random, there's no okay. set. Okay. Um, oh, right, right, right. Okay. Right. So, um, okay. I mean, and there, there's, there's a lot more, it's just. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is pretty right. good, pretty good. Um, the, tell us about the access to it for schools. How, how can schools access it? Okay, so right now we're doing a dry run of it. So right now you, you can um, search in the Google Play Store for Math Fixer or STEM League um, or Polycloud and you would find it there. And you can download it and you'll have access to all of it. Right now it is a link between ourselves and the, the task force to give parents and children, again, that magic triangle, the mm -hmm. tools. Because right now, again, we can say that you teachers are fighting against, you know, a battle of equipment. So right now we're going to give you tools that would augment your skills to allow you to properly deliver your content and not only deliver it, but also inspire children to want to learn. Imagine if it is that you go to a school and the children want to learn something, your job is three times easier, or I would imagine, right? So are they ahead of you? Right, so that is that, that to bring out that within them, that's what ourselves at Polycloud and um, the Jamaica Diaspora Task Force, especially yeah. Education Task Force are very passionate about to try to bring out in children, so. Yeah, um, okay, um, um, principals, what do you think about it? Just just by seeing it. That's what I like. You think it's good? It's a wonderful initiative. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Students, um, my students would have a field day. Yeah. That's lovely to hear. That's lovely to hear. Yeah. What, what's the size, though? To download it, what's the size from um, Google Play Store? Um, it's, 30, it's 36 megabyte, megabytes to download it, but the online storage on your phone needs to be 100 megabytes. It's, it's a difference in RAM and RAM, but you need 36 oh, okay. megabytes. Okay. And, um, Right now, and also for rural areas, there's a there's an initiative that we're working on right now to try to create a, a actual device to that maybe Mr. Henry, you might seem very interested in, um, that can bring content to them. You know, mm -hmm. you don't need a smartphone. We just create again. We're Jamaicans and we're, we're we think outside of the box a lot of times. So <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna hopefully we can have a conversation with you about that soon. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to ask you, though, is in education, in an educational sense, 
is um, how if, if students are on that, playing the game and doing whatever with that to increase their performance in math, how, how can teachers uh, and principals track their progress? Good question. Mm -hmm. No, um, you're muted. You're muted. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Excellent question. Um, we have something called the report plus system, which okay. allows. Sorry, give me a second. Right. So this this is a sample of the report plus system. So this gives an idea as to the topic that the child has done, and how many times they've successfully completed each topic. So. It's not as though they can go in it and play after you lose and then that is it. No, they have to completely dominate and master the concept or answer 10 questions correctly in a row in order to get one of these points, right? So now you know, okay, they've, they've answered 10 questions correctly and um, that's good enough for me. Or if you're not feeling that they've, they've, they've done enough clocks or they don't really um, understand well, time, you can tell them. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if you're sharing the rights um, page. Yeah, I was going to say that. No, I'm not? No. Oh, wait, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Yeah. And then you can talk about the, the tracking of progress. Maybe. Right. So I'm, I'm not sure. It should have been sharing the right screen. Are you seeing, are you seeing our clock right now? Okay, yeah, the clock is there now. Good. Okay, all right, so this would be a sample of the report plus. We're seeing a, a blue screen with some yellow writing on um, it, I hope. Yeah, challenges completed, yeah. Groups and multiplication. There we go, there we go. Okay. Right, there we go, wonderful. So this is the, this is the sample of the report plus system where you have an idea of what it is that the child has done and right. how many times they've successfully completed it. And again, successful completion means answering 10 questions correctly. Um, so once I answer 10 questions correctly, mm -hmm. then they get a point to this system and you can see, okay, within groups, they've done this or within addition, they've done this, right? And, and remember, it is not simply just answering questions. They have to answer the questions correctly. So um, that's one way in which you can track. Another way to track is via the star system. And as I said, you can set how much questions you want them to complete in order for them to have a full star um, array here. Once they have a full star array, for example, in multiplication, they have a difficulty in multiplication. You can tell them to practice multiplication constantly. Once they have a full list, then you know that they have a fair, I would say strong, but I'm going to go on a limb and say fair understanding of multiplication because you have to have the questions, you have to answer the questions correctly. Okay. Um, all it, right. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, so that's it. The initiative we want to highlight um, uh, from Javon, Mr. Miller. There, um, I want to talk about, about a few things more um, before we come to the end of the program here, and um, this has to do with questions for um, our principals. Um, what what um, in terms of personnel. Who, um, who have you contacted outside the ministry for assistance? If you, have you contacted anybody at all or businesses or other people outside the ministry? I have spoken to my member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and he told me that he's going, to, he's going to try and assist. Yes. As I said to you earlier, um, I just hope he, 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 it, it is earlier, it is sooner rather than later. Right. What yeah. about you, Mrs. Reynolds? Okay, we have contacted our past students to see how best we could store some tablets, especially mm -hmm. for those students at the grade four to six. Because as you're aware, the ministry is only providing tablets for students who are on the PASS program. So we okay. really want to have all our students engaged. So yes, and we also were in need of a printer to assist okay. the learning kit. So a we printer? Yes, we need a, a large printer that can manage the large printing in bulk mm -hmm. to okay. assist us with the learning kits for those students who are not able to be online engaged on a daily basis. Okay, okay, to print stuff for them. Okay. Um, is there 
the, the, the kind of assistance moving forward. You mentioned that um, we need data moving forward um, continuously, like everybody else needs data. Is there anything else um, you need in terms of assistance moving forward other than data and um, printer and so on? As it, as it relates to me, as I said, uh, I'm from a farming district. Majority mm -hmm. of, um, we have a chosen few who do have um, the device to work with. Of the 48 students that we have, um, we started the, the, the WhatsApp conversation. Um, as a matter of fact, the, um, my teachers call the parent. And for this week so far, today is Wednesday, going into Thursday tomorrow, the most students that we have had coming on stream is like um, 18 or 19 of the 48. No, okay, well, that's less than 50. And that's something that we're used to from, from last school term. Mm -hmm. Right, that's something that we're used to. Oh, so we you need really to need to do something about that. Okay. I hope somebody is listening um, that can tap in here. Um, Okay, now my other question is relating to um, teacher training. Uh, what are some of the areas in which you think teachers need training? Apart from, of course, technology, they need technology training to go on Google, um, the Google uh, suite. To, to, monitor, to monitor the pla different platforms. Yeah, apart from that, what else do you think they need um, training in? Let's start with Mr. Henry and then Mrs. Reynolds. The truth of the, the, truth of the matter is, you know, our teachers, our teachers in this day and age is, is because of the time that we're living in, not talking about the COVID now, we are mostly moving out of the chalk and talk thing mm -hmm. and going into, we have to be using the, the use of, of, the, of different devices. So um, it would be ideally if and when they see it fit to have different, different workshops for different different areas as it relates to how the teachers go about delivering their their their, their selves to the students. Mm -hmm. You see, um, take for example, even the same math here where Mr. Miller has um, a program which could assist. We would love we would love to have something like that. But in 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 fact, um, we would also love to be guided on how to use. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So the thing we really, really need assistance in. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got you, I got you, yes. All right, we're, we're going to talk some more about it. Um, Mrs. Reynolds, what do you think? Um, the training, uh, apart from technology training. The training that I would love for my teachers to be engaged in is that of assessing the students, using these online yes. platforms as an assessment tool, well, and not okay. also to analyze the data and data collection. Oh, very good. Yes. Yes, yes. That That's very good. Oh, yeah. I agree. We all need that. We, we very much yeah. in all need that. Continuously. Um, now, um, before, I'm going to ask um, Dr. Barker uh, just to summarize here in a little bit. Um, but I want to ask, this, this is very important because I grew up in a, in a rural community too, in Jamaica. And, um, and I've, I've seen what the lack of um, delivery and so on, educational opportunity can do to students. It's very, very important that we do not leave, student, leave students behind at any point. Um, what, what, um, what, what do you think are the implications for students who may be, um, may, may, may be we're leaving behind? You think, Mr. Henry? You see, <laughs> nowadays students, um, my students at my school, let me, let, let me be realistic and frank. My student at my school, they love school. Mm -hmm. So you see the fact that they're not able to attend school in itself, it's a, it's a problem. Majority of them would love to be on the different platforms. Because they are not able to, it's had a problem. Mm 
Right. So it's leaving them behind now, all we're telling them to do. Remember I said to you, we're from a farming district. All we're asking them to do is to follow their brothers, their uncles, their grandparents to the bush. Mm -hmm. And when they go to the bush, they farm all different things. I won't even say it on this platform. Yeah, I understand. If you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Totally yes. understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. One well, of our major challenges with um, the parents is that they are not able to assist the students. None at all. Academically. And that in itself is a grave challenge. Because even though, yes, you have them online and mm -hmm. um, they are engaged in the different platforms, and the printed materials are sent home the supervision is not there at home that we would love and right. not that sometimes the parents themselves can't read so they're sure. not able to assist the students in the way we would love for them to be assisted so we are we can't wait for our students to be back with us so we can provide that face-to-face -face teaching and learning because we know that once we have them we can work the magic and work yeah. yes yeah yeah small schools in the rural areas you know sometimes i'm sorry that we make um informed decision as to a one fit one size fits all but in the yes. schools we could because even with my school setting we mm -hmm. could afford the face-to-face -face, um, yes that makes two of us miss that makes two of us have engaged that so, makes sense. You know, if that is the thing. We don't want them to be left behind, so we can't wait for this pandemic to be over so that our students can be back with us in the teaching and learning space. Okay. So we need to find a way to, to reach the um, parents. We need to find a way for them to bridge the gap between school mm -hmm. and home for the time being. Yeah. Very, you, you guys put it really, really well um, in terms of your, the, the way that it is the reality on the ground it's is fact. yeah it's it's factual very fact we can't go around it and talk any way different um um uh, dr barker um there the, the strategy you, you have grown up in jamaica similar to to all of us um and you have seen this but not not in the pandemic era um do you, you see further strategies that can be implemented you know, it's maybe ironic that even though we're in the pandemic, yeah. you know, it is, it is true that the more things change, the more they remain the same. Mm -hmm. Jamaica has always had a very inequitable um, system. Like many countries in the world that's coming out of post-colonial um, leadership, you know, post-colonial setups. Right. And what the pandemic did was not necessarily created um, this inequitable situation in terms of access to resources, in terms of access to the internet, in terms of access to professional development, in terms of you know, learning and who gets learning. This has always been the case. Even in Jamaica right now, this conversation is only true for certain places which are deep rural and all that. If you move into certain um, school communities, it's an easy switch to go mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So there's more than one Jamaica and has always been more than one Jamaica. And my mantra has always been that until we really fundamentally look at the system itself and really address those inequities, we're going to always have to deal with it. But the more things change, the more they remain the same. Mm -hmm. There's always been an achievement gap for boys and girls. That's not, the pandemic will only push that further because girls find it much easier to stay on task, less unsupervised than boys. So that's going to be pushed a bit further. There's always been a, a, an achievement gap for people who had access to um, internet. Mm -hmm. The pandemic Research. is only going to make that bigger. Yeah, but yeah. that achievement that existed. You know, there's always been an achievement gap for, based on parental involvement. And certain communities, the, the communities where there is success, there's a lot of parental involvement. And in the communities where the students struggle, parental involvement. The pandemic didn't make it happen. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing this and having this conversation that maybe for our students to keep up, their parents will have to be more involved. But there are many communities where this was already a given in Jamaica. We're not talking mm -hmm. about even out, outside of the world. Um, the pandemic had always had a problem for people who had 
not necessarily internet, but better resources. Their parents were giving them toys to play with that would encourage learning. Their parents were giving them apps to play with that would get them to develop independent thinking and capabilities. The pandemic will still bring these together. I've always liked the system that we have is one where a plane took off with a hundred people on it to land at a particular point, which is the cohort of students at any one point. And there is an accident, which is our education system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 10 people walk away from the crash and say, look how good the plane was, because I survived. <laughs> it's a serious love, yeah. is, every year in every year our system identifies the top 10 percent that is performing everywhere in the country and send them to the best schools and then leave the other 90 percent to figure out um survival and because you and i are the few of us who went to the top quality schools come out and say it worked for me why it not work for you, mm, for you. And sure. so, yeah. it's the same. everybody's looking at the wreckage but because i am a survivor i can happy look at that and say but because you never study harder because your parents never care because mm -hmm. your parents buy shoes for you rather than this and that so my point is that parental involvement has always been an issue but the pandemic allows us it provides a promise it provides a possibility for a future engagement that perhaps would never have happened if the pandemic didn't come because a lot of our parents believe that school is a separate entity send them to school and it will work we yeah. also have a lot of time. So nowhere's asking questions of parents and say, can you be more involved? And parents are saying, maybe I could, which in the past they'd say, after me, not teacher. The second part of it is that teachers now will have to shift a kind of focus as well. One, include the idea of parental involvement as part of how they design learning and, and, and ensure that parents feel that there is a a pathway for them to be involved in terms of you have to think about how do I engage parents in this process? It's very, very important. And not only saying, I tell you, because there's a difference between a failure in communication and a communication failure. You can send something home and nobody reads it, but that is a communication failure. And when you have a communication failure, it is systemic because everybody is happy. I sent it, I don't know why anybody, there's a mm -hmm. difference between, and then a failure in communication is when you don't send it at all. Mm -hmm. You don't send anything and they don't know. But both of them are real issues. But the difference between the systemic failure is that teach organizers, our administrators can fix it. They can ensure that what we send is received and acted upon. So the final piece to this is that our students, so I've gone through the parents and how this has changed. I've gone through the teachers and how mm -hmm. their mindset will have to change. And I'm putting administrators in that in terms of how they shape that con um, conversation. But students, our students, we are still a society that is, even when we talk about learning, we talk about pedagogy, but there is another aspect to learning, which is about where we talk about management of self-managed learning. It's a term that's not used a lot, a term that's called eutagogy. And it's where our learners will have to move to another space where they need to manage their own learning. You see, they are not equipped for this at all. We can tell them to turn on the computer and follow the lesson and do this. And there we have the communication failure. But the reality of it is that if when we, when we meet with our teaching teams, the conversation needs to move towards how, what skills are we going to focus on in order for our students to be able to be effective in this new um, environment? The fact of the matter, again, is that when we leave this pandemic, those skills are still going to be needed. Mm -hmm. you see, this is not a solution for no. It's a solution yes. that should have been there. Students need to be taught social skills. They need to be taught um, um, thinking skills. They need to be taught communication skills. They need to be taught... Um, even research skills, you know, information literacy, because now we're going to ask them to go online and do many things oh, with us yeah. the present. So I am, I'm shaping this because I want us to look forward with it and realize that this new engagement that we're asking, this triangle that should be existing, and we always talked about it. Now we need to strengthen the vertex of each of these triangles and decide so that the information is flowing one way or the other, but not where it is in a pyramid but more like lying down on the floor where each of the parts are all equal in this. And for that to work, you're gonna to have to create the forums administrator where parents can say, what do we, it, it means you might have to teach your parents as much as you're doing your, um, mm -hmm. your um, what's it called, your sessions, for your, your live online for students, you might have to do one for parents yeah. and say, you know, 
this is what you're going to have to do. And with the kids, you're going to have to start thinking deeply as you design a learning outcome, which skill are we going to explicitly teach in this session? You know, I'm going to teach them to read something and pick out whether they should use Wikipedia or this or that. I'm going to teach you how to do it. Don't assume that they can. I could go on and on. You know me, Dr. Dyer. <laughs> but, 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 but I, want, you're I want you to think yes. about the triangle, you know, deeply. Yes. And, yes. and how we can strengthen each vertex of that triangle to ensure that no child, I'm going to quote Camilla um, here, no child is left behind. 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 Yeah. And thank you so much, Dr. Barker. Um, Will said, I'm glad we're recording it because we can go back and, um, and take substance out of this. It's very, very good. And I'm, I'm hoping again that somebody is listening and willing to step forth and help. Could I give, give helping hand where it's needed? Um, we're going to go around the room here because there's one last word that you want to leave with people out there um, listening. What, what is one thing that you want um, someone to take away from this, this sharing this evening? I'm going to go around the room and ask you to share. Um, Sir, Sir Henry, go ahead first. You on there, and then of course, Mrs. Reynolds. Okay, my last words here. We're small, yet we're here for a purpose. I would really love for some form of help to come from. I don't know where, but we really need and dire needs, and. Anything is, with, with, with Christ in the vessel, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. You really need the assistance. And, and, and I'm talking about not for myself, nor my teachers, but for my students. My mm -hmm. students, they are there, majority of them, they want to be a part of the different, um, well, or a WhatsApp group, but it's not possible. And it's not possible for more than one reason. Mm -hmm. We have no device there, lack of internet access. Most of the times you have to find like a one tree to climb or a one spot up, up in the hill. Right? Because I've been there, I went up there and I have like in one, in one of the adjoining communities to the school, we have like a set of students there having their sessions up by on top of a hill and in a church in the church veranda. Mm -hmm. That's where they group that because that's where they get a bit of signal. Mm -hmm. So we need help. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what what kind of help it is, but we're really looking forward to some form of assistance. Okay. All right. Um thank you so much for sharing, uh, Mr. Henry. No problem. Um, yeah. Mrs. Reynolds? We are now living in the new normal and it's gonna take all hands on board to make this work. So I'm yeah. just saying to the parents, don't worry. You know, we just need your collaboration. Just continue to work with us, you know, as we continue to nurture our students at this point, or we have to put our students' needs first. And I'll say to you, invest in your child today, try and get a tablet for a child because it is the new normal and we have to get them learning and have to get them in the in the in the teaching and learning process and once we get them teaching and learning we know what is going to at the end of the day we are going to be proud of the results so i'm just mm -hmm. want to say to my parents and to jamaica and to the world wide web that you know it's now it takes more collaboration than ever before and we just need all hands on board to make this work Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, yes. Somebody is listening. Um, Javon, how can they access um, PolyCloud um, program? Um, well, it's on the Play Store, so they can search for PolyCloud Interactive. And um, after searching for PolyCloud Interactive, it should be among the listed applications. It's called Math, Math Fixer or STEM League. Um, it's there <laughs> for you to use to your heart's desire. So please use and and uh, abuse. Yeah. And it's basically free for right now. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have um, subsequent uh, meetings. Um, it's Javon for to, to highlight the, the technology features. Okay. And um, right. of course, 
Dr. Barker, we will do this again very, very soon. Um, we'll see you. And there's another, um, there is another Jaminar that is coming up on Sunday, apart from Dr. Barker's Jaminar on assessment in the distance learning environment. Um, there's another one is community and school partnership, as well as the professional development um, is subcommittee in, in the Jamaica Diaspora Education Task Force. Those two um, groups or subcommittees, they are putting on a Jaminar on Sunday to talk about um, parents' involvement, the connection between school and home. And the director for the professional development subcommittees, Ms. Tasheka Winter, um, she's putting on, she's coming on um, on Thursday night with me to do the parent, Google for parent um, Jaminar. Um, she's gonna be on with that one. That's tomorrow night actually at um, seven o'clock Jamaica time, eight o'clock Eastern daylight time. So stay tuned for that. Um, everyone out there on jamaicans.com, one at time, jamaicans.com for this opportunity. Um, JDTA Network and the Education Task Force, we're, we're live um, every other week. So every two weeks or so, we're live with the with EduTalk, Diaspora Engagement, on this talking about education right across the diaspora. Um, initiatives, gaps we're looking at, um, we're wanting to talk to people who can fill gaps as much as possible I want to highlight um, those areas of our community that we quote unquote have probably been forgotten um, because of where they're located. So um, thank you very much everyone for coming on um, tonight, Mr. Mr. Henry, yes, Mrs. Yes, Walsh Reynolds, uh, Mr. Javon Miller and my dearest friend here, um, Dr. Miguel Barker. Um, we will see everybody next time, okay? Take care, everybody, and uh, have, a, have a great um, night and morning for, for Dr. Barker. Have a good day. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. Yes, bye. bye.